welcome all of you for the data analytics with the career guidance class so today we are in day 13 the topic what we are actually discussing today is pivot tables let's see what is pivot tables are let me open one table and then i'll explain about what is a pivot table if you see this this is a raw data now suppose if you want to get summarized reports okay let's say for the region if you want to get the total sales a total profit usually what we do is we saw a concept of data consolidation we go to this data we have this consolidation or we used to take this subtotal but when we saw this consolidation it was like only one column that is whichever is the column in the left hand side only that we could group suppose if you want to make a dynamic grouping and dynamic aggregating of the values then consolidation will not actually work it is having its own limits suppose if you think that i want to summarize the reports dynamically or more number of columns to be summarized then we will use a feature called as pivot tables so in a simple words pivot table means summarizing your data it's a very simple concept actually most of the people actually feel that pivot tables are very complex or very difficult to understand or it is very advanced but i'll tell you pivot tables are very easy very simple and also we can create wonderful reports very quickly actually let me show you how actually you can create the pivot tables and what all things you should actually take care before creating the pivot tables first thing is we should understand there are few principles or say there are few things what you have to keep in mind when you are creating the pivot table so what are those let me tell you first thing is please check all the columns none of the column headers should be blank all the columns should have the column headers this is first thing second thing is make sure that there is no blank columns like this otherwise if we create a pivot tables by selecting the data it will not create the pivot table it will throw error next is if you have a blank row this is not a problem but you will get the report as blank rows if you are selecting the entire data like this all right the main thing is make sure that you will not have a blank column header or a blank columns within the data the data set or the range what you select you can have a blank column data like this but you should have header this will work but make sure that you have a complete data so these things you should actually keep in mind now let's see how we can create a pivot table while creating a pivot table select anywhere you can keep your cursor anywhere in your data set or say the range let me go to this insert here i have something called as pivot table when i click on this pivot table you can see that i have various different options from table from external data source from data model let's see this what is this table or range when i click on this table or range you just observe when i clicked on table or range you can see that it is giving me the range a1 to v 9995 when you use this uh, range you can see that it is fixed so what does that mean if you append the data after 9995 that will not be considered when you actually try to update or say refresh the pivot table then what is the right way 
the right way what you have to do is convert this into table. So how to convert this into table, I'll tell you. Go to this insert tab. Here I have this table. Click on this table. When I click on this table, you can see that it lasts for the range. Let it be. Later on, dynamically, it will be keep changing. My table as headers should be checked so that we have headers for my table what I'm creating. I'll click on OK. You can see that this will get converted to table. Now let me create the pivot table. If you go to this insert, you can see I have this from table or range. If I click on this, you can see that it says table one. Previously, it was giving me the range. Now it is saying table one. The table one, what you see, whenever you keep creating the tables, it will name, it will give a name for the table what we create. Like what we have the sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four. Here when we create this table, this also will be named. Every table will be named. So what I'll do, when I create a table, the table name should be renamed accordingly. So what we'll do is, when I convert a range into table, okay, and again, keep in mind, this is a question which is there in MO200. Let me click on this table design. You can see that I have one tab here, the contextual tab. When I create this, when I convert this range into table, I'll get this table design. Here you can see there is one option that says table name. Let me select this. I'll name it as TBL. It's a prefix actually. You can give or you can ignore, but usually I practice this to give the prefix for every object what we create. TBL, I'll say orders, say enter. When I say enter now, the name of this table becomes TBL orders. You have this resize, you can just click on this. Suppose if you think that you want to resize, you can uh, select the new range if you think there is some new data which is actually getting entered. Now the name of this table is TBL orders. You can create the pivot table directly from here also. Like it says summarize with pivot table. If I click on this, you can see I'll get the same window. Now you can see it says TBL orders. That is table orders table. So either I can create pivot table from this summarize with pivot table or I'll go to this insert and I'll create this pivot table. Both are same. I'll click on this from table or range. You can see that I'm getting this window. It says new worksheet, existing worksheet. The good practice is use this new worksheet. This is the good practice actually. Again, if you think that you want to create within this sheet, you can create, but make sure that the data is not increasing. That is, you're not adding more columns or the records. Depends on where you're actually creating the pivot table. Now I'll say new worksheet. I'll click on OK. You just see when I click on OK, a new pivot table is created here. A new sheet is created and a new pivot table is created. It says pivot table one. If you think you want to rename that, you can see here, I have this pivot table one, same thing like what we did for table. We can rename this and say PVT order, say it. You can see the name of the pivot table also comes here. Now, what all things we have to make a note here? Once I create a pivot table, here I'll get one placeholder for creating table. This is nothing but a table, but here we can actually convert, you know, the column, uh, the data what we have in the rows to column headers. There are many things I'll explain one by one in detail. Towards my right hand side, you can see there is something called as pivot table fields. This is dockable. What is dockable? See, I can remove this. I can move it anywhere I want. This is called as dockable. Anywhere you can place. It's not that it has to be always placed in the right hand side. You can place that in the left hand side as well. It's dockable like this. But the recommendation is let this be in the right hand side because it is like common. Every time we'll have all this formatting tab also in the right hand side. Now I have this pivot table fields and you can see that there are so many fields. That is all the fields from this particular table, what we have created the pivot tables, all right? Just keep this in mind. Just below these columns, there is one, say one, one place where we have 
the placeholders for uh, dragging and dropping are fields. You can see that it says filters, columns, rows, and values. These are the placeholders for dragging and dropping our columns. And again, we can change this. However, we want, you can go to the settings and we can change this. See, if you think I want to change the layout of this, you can do that according to my requirement like this. So usually this is the default layout. So please keep this. This is the easiest way of creating the pivot tables. All right. So we understood about the pivot table fields and the placeholder of this pivot table. All right. So how actually we can create the pivot table by dragging and dropping of the fields. Now it is you who have to decide which column I need to summarize. Let's say I wanted to summarize my region table, uh, region column. I'll go here and try to search the region column. I'll take this region. See, I can either click on this particular checkbox automatically. It will take me to this particular box or you can drag and drop. See, I dragged and dropped. Now I have this sales column where I need to aggregate. I'll just drag this and I'll put it here in value area. You can see that box here. You can see now the data is summarized. That means I have the grouped region names and here you can see the aggregated value. The same thing. We could have done in consolidation as well, but in consolidate, we can only consolidate, we can group only the left column. But here in pivot table, we have the liberty to drag and drop either in the row headers or in the column headers as well. All right. You can see that when I drag and drop the sales, automatically I'm getting this sum of sales. That means by default, when we drag a number column, so this will give me sum. Can I change this to other functional, functional functions as well? Say what I'll do, either I can go here, select this heading, double click on this. I'll get one window which says value field settings. I can go here, select any of these options. Let's say I want average. Select this. It says average of sales. Double click. If you want a max, click on this. I'll get max of sales. Can I get more than one column that is some average max, you know, all together? We can do that as well. So what should I do? Drag the same field and drop it here again. Now I can see that I'm getting the sum of sales, max of sales. Suppose if you think I want average, drag and drop, I'll get the sum of sales once again, then I'll say average. Can I rename the headers? Yes, you can rename the headers as well. So it says sum of sales, I'll say total sales. See? Double click on this, it says average of sales. I'll say average sales, max sales. So you can rename this as well. All right, let's remove all this. I'll take the sales column again. Let the default name be as is. We can also change the functions by clicking on the small arrow here. I'll just click on this. You can see that I have so many options here. Below, we have this value field setting. So this way also we can change the functions. All right. So we understood how to drag and drop the columns, how to group and how to aggregate. And then we also saw how we can actually change the functions as well as change the headers. Now, if you think this is my report, what I wanted to create, I'll just copy this. And then let me create one sheet here i'll paste it you can see that this is the report what i wanted i can use this for my presentation or you know reports creation charts or whatever next suppose i want the summarization for category column let me remove this region see you just have to drag it and drop it outside anywhere like this you can see that now there is no header here i'll drag this category and i'll drop it here see now the summary is for category column. You can drag and drop any columns here. Say ship mode, drag and drop. You can see I'm getting the summarization based on the columns what I drag and drop. Let's take this region again. 
I will go here and drag this region and I'll drop it here. Can I take more than one columns? The question is, can I take more than one columns? Because this can be done by consolidate option as well. But can I take more than one columns? Let's go here. Let's say I want to create a report for region. Under region, I want category as well. I'll drag this category and drop it here in the rows. See, I have this region. Under that, I have the category. Region and category. You can see the sales value is getting split now. Here we have one small box here where I can click on this. I can either expand or I can collapse. This is called as collapsing. That is, we are getting the summarized report here. And when I click on this, this will get expanded. So this is giving me the next level. That is the hierarchical report. Right click here. We have this expand and collapse. I'll say expand entire field. You see, all the fields will be expanded. Now let me copy this and I'll paste here to get the reports. You can see that I'm getting the reports here like this. But if you think uh, this is the way where I need to show my reports, yes, you can keep it as is, but uh, usually we like to get the reports region in one column, category in another column. But if you see, I'm getting the reports in the same column, which, you know, in the pivot table, it is fine. But when you go to this, normally, if you would take this to a PPT or, you know, want to create a chart, this will not actually give me a meaningful table. So what should I do? Let me show you. I can split this into two different columns. That is the way what we actually show the reports. Now, if you see this, we have something called as pivot table analyze and design. There are the two tabs which appears for pivot tables. When I click outside, see, they'll disappear. The contextual tabs for pivot table is pivot table analyze and design. Let me click on this design. If you go to this design, I have a group called as layout. Here, we can do a lot of things to change the layout of any pivot tables, the layout. If you just observe, I have here something called as report layout. Let me click on this. And here I have so many different options in that I'll select this show in tabular form. When I click on this, you can see that the table will get split. That is region and category in two different columns. Now let me copy this. I'm just showing you how the reports can be created. See, now the same data, whatever uh, we had in the same column, now it has got split into two different columns and I'm getting the summarized report of sales. Next, I don't want this subtotal. You can see I have the subtotal here. I want to remove this subtotal. Subtotal can be removed. Say, select this subtotal, right click and say, here I have the subtotal region. Click on this, subtotal is gone. Or you can go to this design. Here I have this layout. I have this report layout. Okay, sorry. Subtotal. And here it says, do not show subtotal. Click on this, the subtotals are gone. Now let me copy this. Click here, paste it. See, here I have the subtotal. Here I don't have the subtotal. If you think you want subtotal, you can keep it. If you don't want, you can just remove that. You can get the reports like this. All right, let's go back. I have the blank cells here. Suppose if we are actually using this table and imagine that we are actually using some VLOOKUP or something to get the results, we won't get proper results here because this is blank. One way is I'll go here, select this and say control D, control D everywhere. I have to do this control D. Instead, in pivot table itself, we have an option of filling these blank cells. How? Let me tell you. Go to this design. You have this report layout. We have this repeat all item labels. Click on this. Automatically, the labels are repeated. Let me copy this. Go here and let me paste it just next to this C. So likewise, we can create the reports. Next, I have the region, I have the category. And you can see there are so many different, uh, there are so many rows. I want to convert this into a matrix where 
the category column what we have here with furniture office supplies and technology i want this category all the categories whatever we have to be as a header here like this this is called as pivoting pivoting means converting your data whichever is there in the row as a column headers how to do that you see this category here towards my right hand side you have this box here drag this category and put it in column headers just drag and drop done see now this becomes the column headers so the entire table the structure itself is changed let me copy this and if i go and paste it here you just see now this is like a matrix table I have this grand total. This is called as row grand total. This is called as column grand total. If you don't want the grand total, so what I'll do, I'll go to this design, grand total off for rows and columns done over. See? I can see that I don't have the grand total for the rows or for the columns. Suppose if you want the grand total back you can go your grand total say on for rows and columns let me again remove this i'll copy the data and i'll just paste it next to this you can see that i don't have the grand totals why i'm actually copying and pasting it is just to show you you can summarize your reports however you want you just have to plan your data that's it see how my table should be how i should actually summarize my reports what all columns i need to group what all columns i need to aggregate you have to decide all right so this is actually pivot tables there is nothing much advanced things what we have in pivot table you just have to plan which column has to be dragged and dropped okay fine now we understood the basic understanding of the pivot tables we just dragged and dropped few things and we saw that how actually we can summarize the reports and things like that. Now, let's say, can I have one more column here? Let's try that as well. Let me go here. I'll just take the ship mode, drag and drop. You can see that I'm getting this ship mode. This is region, this is ship mode, and I have this category here. So you can summarize the reports however you want. Now, if you want to get the grand total, what I'll do is go to this design. So I'll go here, I'll say on for grand totals. And suppose if you think I want to get the subtotal, I'll go here. I'll say show subtotals. You can see I'm getting the subtotals. So likewise, you can go just select this design. Here I have this layout. There are so many options here where I can actually select and enable or disable the options. Now, if you say grand totals, I want only for rows. I click on this. I have only for rows the grand total. I want grand total only for columns. You can see that I have only grand totals here for the columns. So you can decide the layout how you want. All right. So let me disable the grand totals and I'll say subtotal to not show. Next is about changing the styles. You have this pivot table styles. Click here. You can change the styles however you want here you have so many different styles you can select according to your template let me select nice template let's say i want something let's see if you want to remove the style you can go here this is the default you can just click on this you'll get the default ones that also you can all right let me just remove this. Next is, we have some features. Say, let me remove all this. Let's make the pivot table very simple pivot table. And I'll take this region, put it in filters here. What we'll do, we'll take the segment and then drag and drop there. You can see that I have one pivot table here, which is actually summarized for segment. I'll copy this pivot table, paste it here. Now for this pivot table, just remove this. I'll take this ship mode. You can see I have one pivot table for segment, then ship mode. Let me copy this and I'll paste it here. Now what I'll do, 
I will remove this ship mode and let me take this category. All right, you can see I have three pivot tables here where I have the summarized data for segment, ship mode, and category. If you see, I have one uh, option here that is filters. The entire table will get filtered. Let me click on this. I'll select this central, say, okay, you can see that. Now this table is getting filtered for only central, only south, or say west. Whichever data I need, I can go, I can filter this. Now, if you see the other two tables, they still say all. I want this to be like west. I'll go select this west. Click on this. I'll say west. Say OK. Now, just observe if I want to change the region, I'll say central and say OK. I want the other two pivot table also to be filtered with central. But if you want to do that, I have to go here individually. I have to change this. Instead, we have an option. Let me tell you what it is. Select any one of the pivot tables. Any one of the pivot tables. You have this pivot table analyze. When I click on this pivot table analyze, there are so many options what you get. In that, we have something called as insert slicer. Let me click on this insert slicer. When I click on insert slicer, you can see there are so many columns here. These are the columns which we have in uh, the table what we have created. I will select region. You can see that I have this region. Let me click on this region. Say OK. When I click on the region, we get a slicer like this. So what is a slicer? Slicer is nothing but it's a fancy way of filtering your tables. You can see there are various different you know, buttons here. Now what happens, let me tell you. When I click on this east, see, south, you can see that the data is getting filtered when I click these options. But our requirement was when I click or say when I select any of these, say, filters, I wanted all the other tables also to be filtered, but it's not happening. So what we should do, if you want to filter multiple pivot tables, okay, simultaneously, you should use the slicers. After inserting the slicers, right click and here I have something called as a report connections or you can go to this, say slicer, you have the slicer here. Here also we have this report connection. Anything we'll do, usually what we do, right click and say, report connection that is the easiest way or if you think you want to go to this tab okay there we have this report connection when i select this report connection you will get all the pivot tables which you have created now i'll select these two pivot tables you just observe what happens i'll say okay now if i just click on this east see you can see that all the other pivot tables are getting changed like this. So this way, we can actually link all the pivot tables where we can change the data. We can create some charts and then we can create something like a dashboard that I'll tell you. When we come to this project, there is a session on projects where we can create the dashboards, very nice dashboards where we can use the slicers. There is something called as timelines. I'll show you what is timelines. So we can use all these options and we can create a very nice dashboard which will be dynamic and interactive as well. So this way we can actually create pivot table. Let me show you what is timeline. I'll go to this pivot table analyze and here I have insert timeline. So what is timeline? Timeline is something similar to your slicer, but this works only on the column, which is date. Let me select this order date. I'll say, okay. I can see that I'll get one slicer like this. You can see that I have this 2015, January, February, March, and things like that because I have selected months. If you think I want this to be as years, select this, see, it's 2015, 16, 17, 18. Same thing, right click, 
report connection i'll connect the pivot tables now you see all the pivot tables will get connected like this and we have the slicer here we can filter the data all right so this way we can actually create the pivot tables and then we can create the slicers and try to filter all the data this is what we used to do all these days that is we have the data in one single sheet and if the data is not there in the single sheet we used to bring everything into one single sheet and then create pivot tables so keep this in mind this is what we used to do but now the scenarios are changed what if the data is coming from various different tables various different sources or various different sheet itself then what should we do now i have one more sheet here let me just open this workbook and let's check i have one pivot table or say i have one tier, you know workbook here where we have the data in different sheets it's the same table what we have here which is there in one single sheet i have split this into various different sheets like this now what if i have the data like this the data is in different sheets can we create a pivot table previously before 2013 versions we were not able to do this pivot table if you want to create a pivot table all the data was supposed to be in one single sheet if you want to bring the data into this sheet what we have to do is we have to use vlookup and get the data here say segment then ship mode then customer product all these data we used to take this year into one single sheet and then create the pivot tables for summarizing the reports but now the scenario is changed we don't have to bother we just have to connect or say join or create a relationship between the tables how to do that please concentrate i'll tell you this is the concept now the same concept is actually available in power bi as well people who actually you know attend the power bi session sql session these joins these relationships are available in all the other applications where we work on the data all right how to do that directly we cannot connect all these tables so what should we do first thing what you should do is convert the data convert the range into table how to do that the previous pivot table this one we converted that by clicking on this insert and clicking on this table same thing what we do we'll go here we'll convert all the data what we have into different tables see first step is converting the range into tables i'll go to this insert you have this table click on this let the data let the cursor be anywhere in this particular range click on this table you can also use the shortcut key control plus t i'll click on this table when i click on this table you can see that it will select the range and also it says my table as headers i'll say okay now this table uh, sorry this range has been converted to table and i told you this will get the name as table one now what i'll do i'll say table data i'm just giving a name for this which is easy for us to recognize which table it is let's go to second table it says segment again i'll use control t or i'll click on this table see here it says my table as headers it is not checked make sure that you will select this otherwise you don't have the headers how to correct this again we can use that power query editor and we can do that but still let's not take the chance we'll go here i'll click on this say okay done it says table 2 i'll name it as table segment see every table i'm just trying to rename ship mode select this go to this insert table my table as headers and i'll rename this table ship mode i'm just renaming the table name customer insert table my table as headers i'll go here table customer and have this product go here say insert table and then we'll name this as table product not required for me i'll go here select this location and i'll say control t okay 
table and we'll say location. I named all the sheets here. I converted the range into table. Now I'll try to create the pivot table. Let me go to this main table here that is data. Go to insert. Here I have this pivot table. You see this? I have this pivot table. Same thing. I just click on this. Now, once I click on this, what should I do is previously the data was in one single sheet. I selected the range or table and clicked on OK. But this time we have to click on this, add this data. Go here, say add this data to the data model. I'll click on OK. Just see, add this data to the data model. This has to be checked. I'll say OK. When I click on OK, the tables what we have created, all these will be available in the data model. Now just observe, I created this pivot table. Just observe the structure of this pivot table here in the pivot table fields. Let me show you the previous uh, table. You can see that when I select this pivot table, see, see the structure here. I have all the columns like this. There is no other table. Let me go back to the pivot table what we just created. See, here I have the table here. When I click on this, it is expanding and then we're getting the columns. So there is some change here actually. I can create the pivot table just on this single table itself, but let me show you. Here, this is the active table, okay? But all the other tables are also available now because we had selected data model. Now here I have this all. Let me click on this all. You can see all the tables are available here. This will be available only when you convert the range into tables. Now you can see there is one divider, we'll say the separator here. That means all these tables are not connected with each other. What will happen if there is no relationship between each tables? Let me tell you. I'll select this location, right? I want to create a summarized report. Like we started with a simple report, that is region. Select the same thing. I'll drag and drop in rows. I have this summarized, that is grouped column for a region from location table. This is a different table. Now, the next step, what we did in the previous pivot table, we selected sales. The sales is in the data table. Now let me select the sales and I'll drag and drop here. See what happens when I drag and drop. I'm getting the results, but the data what we are getting, the summarized values, what I'm getting is it's a complete overall total of the table. Now let me go here and check this. See, I have the sales column. Now if you check this total, see, I'm getting 22,97,200.86. That is what I'm getting here. That means the overall total. Why am I getting that? Why I am not getting the summarized report for these grouped region? I'll tell you, they are not related. They are not connected. How to connect that? See, in the right hand side, you can see that it says the relationship between tables may be needed. That means we have to create the relationship. Now, what I'll do, I'll just click on this auto detect. Just click on this auto detect. It will try to detect automatically the relationships are created. I'll say close. See, now I'm getting the summarized report exactly like what we had in this previous pivot tip here. All right. What if I want to get other tables? Now you just see, let me go here and I'll show you how we can actually create the relationship manually as well. So what we did now is Automatically, it is getting created. Now, let's say I want this segment. I'll take this segment and put in headers. See, I'm not getting proper results here because they are not related again. See, I'll say auto detect. Now, I can see that I'm getting this proper reports here because now we related segment, location, and data. I can see that there is no separator between these three tables. Why? Because they are related. The relationship has been created. Now, how to create this relationship manually? Not always, you know, you should uh, keep saying auto detect. Auto detect is just fine. 
It's a quick way of creating the relationship. But still, you should know how they're actually related, how we can actually relate the tables manually. Now, what we'll do, we'll go here. We have this pivot table analyze. When I click on this, here we have this relationship. If I click on this relationship, you can see we had created a relationship that is two different tables, location and segment. So we gave you no know, auto detect, it detected and then it gave me the connections, the relationship. Here we have this auto detect. What it will do is it will try to detect all the relationship and then it will give me the relationship. But for me, I want to learn how to do this manually as well. I have an option called as new. When I click on this new, I'll get one small table here, which helps us in creating the relationship. Again, I'm telling you can create this by clicking on auto detect, but you will not know how they are actually connecting. Automatically, it will connect with each and every table what we have here. But let's see how to do this manually as well. So what I'll do first, I'll select the data table and I should know on which table I need to connect. Let's say I want to connect with this customer table. I'll go to this data table here. I'll have the customer ID. Let's see, see how the customer ID. The tables are connected with common columns. Let's go to this related table. I'll click on this. I'll select this customer and this customer table has got customer ID. You can see that from table data, the customer ID is getting connected with customer table, customer ID. So this is how we can create the relationship. If I click on OK, now the customer table is also connected. So likewise, we can connect any tables. You can see that the separators will get disappeared. As soon as I create the relationship, the um, you know the separators, whatever is there, that will get disappeared. Now, I will click on this customer table. If you think I want to get the customer data, drag this and drop it here. And then I'll take this region, let me put it here. See, I can create the pivot table like this. Now. After this, say, let me remove this segment. So I have the sum of sales. Whatever we did in our previous single sheet pivot tables, everything we can do now, say double click on this, we get these options to change the functions. Let me remove this customer name. Let me take segment. Let's take a small table instead of taking a very big table. You can insert a slicer. Let's go to this insert slicer. Let's say I want region. Let me click on this region. Say, okay, see. All the options, what we did in our single sheet pivot table, same options are available here also. Only thing is, suppose if the data is in different sheets, I'm just trying to convert that into table. And then I'm creating a relationship to create pivot tables. So you just observe in the previous pivot table, I have data in one single sheet. So I created pivot table and did all the options, whatever I could do. In this pivot table, the second option what we did, the data was in different different sheets, converted that into tables and connected each other so that I'll get, you know, data to create pivot table like what we did in the previous single sheet. So the pivot table options won't change. Only thing is you have to make sure that you are creating relationship between all the tables what you are actually using. For that, the simple thing what you should actually remember is convert your range into table and make sure that you're connecting between each and every column. Say you should have the columns here. Otherwise, just like that, we cannot connect. Say in this case, I have this ship ID, I have customer ID, I have segment ID, location ID, product ID, where if you go to the table segment, I have the segment ID. It is getting connected to segment ID here. I'll go to the ship mode. I have the ship ID. Here I have the ship ID. You can see that. Where is that? See, ship ID. So likewise, likewise, you know, we can create the relationship. And after that, whatever pivot tables we are creating, it is just exactly like what we did with the single sheet pivot tables. All the options are available here. Only thing is you have to create the relationship. For that, we should create pivot tables 
by creating tables and make sure that all the tables will be in data modeling okay right so this is all about the pivot tables and you can go explore uh, you know as much as possible there are so many options actually you can go here go to this pivot table and analyze there are so many options you just go and keep exploring a lot of things will be learning from this particular tab and go to this design design is to change the designs okay all right so this is what we have in the pivot tables now let me take some questions already there are some questions which are there i'll answer them after that i'll take some more questions if you think that you have some more questions please message i'll answer let me first take a few questions bharat is saying that sir can we change this slicer colors for each tab rakesh has given the answer yes we can change the slicer color yes see we can change the color you can go to this say let's say i have this uh, slicer i'll go to the slicer here you can see that we have the styles let's go here and i'll click on any of these styles okay according to your uh, requirement you can just select here you can change the colors okay so we can change the colors of the slicer but make sure that you'll use appropriate colors for your uh, uh, you know template okay otherwise also you can go here select any of these um, say styles right click and you can say duplicate and you can uh, duplicate that here we have all the options for uh, formatting so you can go here say fill color if you think that i want to change this color you can select this and say okay okay so you can uh, apply this say which was that see select and apply see you can customize as well right click duplicate and then you can use it something like this you can change the color all right Bharat, did i answer your question you say yes then we'll go for uh, it's okay santosh is asking while converting data okay while converting data into tables can we select all sheet at once and change converting no we cannot do that uh, santosh because see when i go here this range whatever is there okay this first we have to convert this into table because a lot of other process will happen in the back end so once it is getting converted to table and we have to name that so every table okay you have to do it individually you cannot convert that simultaneously because each table has got its own range okay so the answer for your question is no we cannot create tables simultaneously for all the sheets all right santosh answered mention that santosh quickly so that i can take one more question yeah okay ganesh is saying can we connect relationship for multiple table at a time no this also cannot be done but there is one option what you can actually do see here we have this power pivots okay click on this manage when i click on this manage it will take me to something called as power pivots okay here i have one more window here what's that power pivots here i have something called as design view okay when i click on this design view here i'll have all the tables okay so we can drag and drop let me delete this. see i can drag and drop say for example i have this location id drag and drop so this way also we can create a relationship okay so here we can drag and drop all this so we can create the relationship like this otherwise we have to create relationship by using the option say create relationship but again i'm telling you you cannot create all at a time otherwise we have that auto detect option just click on that all the tables whatever is there okay in your uh, list the list of uh, you know tables that will automatically detect the connections and then it will create a relationship that way actually we can do it right ganesh did i answer you ganesh yeah okay gangadhar is asking sir to create a relationship is the row size of tables 
should be same. Now, I will leave it to you. I'll just ask you a question itself. In data table, okay, I have 9,995 records. I connected with table segment with three records. Right? Now, you just think what question you had asked. Is there any answer for that? Did you get the answer? Gangadhar, you understood what I'm trying to tell? Yeah. So there is no such rule or say anything where uh, the number of rows what we have in one table to be connected with, uh, you know, the number of rows what we have in other table. There is um, no, you know, such uh, rules actually. You can have any number of rows in one table and any number of rows in other table we can connect provided you should have the IDs. Okay. This customer ID. And that customer ID should be there in the customer table as well. So the size of the rows will not matter. So you can uh, create the relationship, right? Gangadhar, did I answer your question? Okay, good. Any other questions? All right. So before we end the session, I want one minute of yours. Quickly, I want all of you tell me how was today's session. Take one minute. I want all of you to tell me how was today's session. Excellent. Thank you, Emad. Perfect start to new day. Informative. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Whenever I read this statement, learned new thing, I'll be very happy because uh, people will come. You know, um, when they learn something new that day, that is what I feel very happy. New things learned. Very good, Gopi. Samanth. Okay, today's session is really awesome. Learned new topics. Okay. Practice. Yes, Dandini, you have to practice actually. Very informative, Zamir. Okay. Good. So, people, we have Santosh here. Uh, who actually completed his uh, MO200 uh, last week. Okay. So, Santosh, I'll just uh, give me a minute. I'll just unmute all of you. All right, Santosh, you're there. You can unmute yourself and you can tell, uh, you know, um, he has got out of it actually. Yes, sir. And there, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. First of all, uh, I would like to thank you from Guadalajara because uh, without your support, uh, it wouldn't have been possible. Hello? Santosh, your voice is not so clear. It's like breaking. Yes, sir. Are you able to hear me, sir? Yeah, now it's clear, actually. Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank you from bottom of my heart, sir. Okay. Because uh, without your support, this wouldn't have been possible. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we are listening. Go ahead, Santosh. We are listening. Yeah, yeah. So I would like to thank you and uh, Rocky ma'am and uh, Vidya ma'am for all the support. I didn't do anything. I was not there actually. <laughs> <laughs> Vidya and Rocky helped you in uh, doing that. But yes, I'm sir. very happy to, you know, see that you got 1000 uh, out of 1000. Because if you come to our institute, we can uh, help you out in uh, clearing the exams. Yes. <laughs> see that uh, you got out of out as well. Thank you, sir. And, thank you. Uh, for um, how was the exam? It was very easy questions, right? Yeah, it was easy, sir. Whatever you taught in yeah. on these uh, 10 12 days, uh, everything yeah. was it's, and, it's yeah. actually very easy. Anyone can easily take the exam, yeah. yes. Sir. I would recommend all, all of you to take this exam, and so it will add a weightage to uh, your resumes. It is actually very easy. You can take by yourself still. If you don't have confidence, mm -hmm. please do come to our institute, we are there to help you in clearing the exam. So don't worry about it. It's very simple exam, actually. But again, uh, people. This weekend with experts, uh, we have uh, the session on, uh, you know, how to actually clear uh, the certifications, PL300 and uh, MO200. Gopi, yes, we have the sessions on this Saturday and Sunday, both MO200 and PL300. Uh, we also have a lot of terms, okay, which we'll be giving you. So you can uh, read that and clear, but uh, you can ask Santosh about his experience. The questions what we get is very, very simple. So it's very simple. You can clear by yourself. If you still don't have confidence, please come. We are there to help you out. We'll try to, you know, clear the exam. So please 
I request all of you get certified. Okay. Previously, we used to tell that you know certificates are not required, but now if you go to any companies, first they see is about whether you are certified or not. Okay. Anyways, that complete uh, um, session is there. I will explain that about uh, uh, you know about uh, the complete uh, examination certifications. How actually you should get prepared. What all questions will be coming. What are type of questions will be coming? Okay, that I'll be explaining you in detail, which will help you in clearing the exams very easily. And there are some dumps also, uh, which uh, you know you can read that and uh, complete your exams. Okay, uh, sir, I have yeah. a question, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, I want to take this uh, expert certification. Also, sure, sir. you can take that. You can take. Yeah, that. regarding that, uh, do you give any tips, sir, on that? Yes, yes, yes. We can uh, give that. That is also very easy. But for that, you should know. A little bit of uh, macros as well. Uh, okay. Slightly, you know, complex than what uh, you have taken uh, MO200, but that is very, not so very complex, but yes, you can take it. You can uh, clear that as well. Okay, sir. Thank okay, you. so Gopi is asking, conducted by whom, sir? Uh, the examination will be conducted by Microsoft. Okay. But since we are uh, certi port, so we are authorized for conducting exams for Microsoft Office only, not PL300, but still we'll support for PL300. Don't worry. What is the cost of the certificate? Irshad, you can contact uh, um, Suma or Raki for that. There are a lot of things. If you just want only vouchers, there are some different price. If you think you want to get the dumps and if you want to get some uh, materials, then that will actually cost you. That's a different cost. You can contact Suma. Okay, I'll give her number. And zero double six zero seven eight seven nine three. Okay, so you contact her, she will uh, guide you. But, anyways, we have uh, uh, the webinar as well, the complete details about how we can clear the examinations. Okay, right, people, thank you so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow in a very interesting topic that is reportings. Okay, where I'll tell you how actually you can create basic charts, dynamic charts, interactive charts, and we'll see if you have time, then we can create one small dashboard as well by using this pivot tables. Otherwise, there is a session on creating the dashboards that day we can see. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow, but you'll have a very interesting, uh, um, you know, uh, chapter that is charting techniques using Excel. Okay, right, people have a great day. Thank you so much for attending the session and see you guys in next session. Bye, Bye sir. Have a nice day, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thanks all of you. Bye-bye.